Matthew Albans is the acting ICE director. And if there's a hotter issue in the country that needs to be addressed, I don't know what it is, than illegal immigration and the flood of uh, those coming across our southern border. Uh, so, I'm acting director, thanks so much for joining us, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. So when, when 60 Minutes does a feature, when Maria Bartiromo goes down there, when uh, Thomas Friedman writes a column talking about a crisis at the border, does it change anything? Um, I like to hope so. Um, as we've been maintaining for the better part of a year, if not longer, there is an absolute crisis at the border. It's not just a humanitarian crisis. It's not just a border security crisis. It's also a public safety and national security crisis. Sure. Um, right Let's take a look at some of the numbers, uh, Matthew. The number of false claims of family units between October 2018 and March of 2019, 2,700 migrants said they were part of a family but weren't. And when you look at it, 62% of Southwest border apprehensions involve family units or unaccompanied children who were apprehended. That's because the folks who are in these other countries who are looking for a better life or are trying to get to the United States, they know how our laws work, right? They do, and if they don't, the smugglers are coaching them, uh, them on how to manipulate our laws. Um, that's why what we're currently doing is surging resources from ICE's Homeland Security Investigations to the border. We're sending human trafficking experts, document fraud experts, forensic interviewers, victim assistance specialists, because our first and primary goal is the safety and security of these children. Um, these children are being victimized. We know they're being trafficked. We know they're being recycled and sent back across the border numerous times to be rented by these cartels and by these organizations to, to be utilized again and placed with a, a non-relative adult just so that adult could be released because they know that we can't hold them. Mm. Um, and, and these are the loopholes that we've talked about. We've asked Congress to make some changes and they've refused to do so at this point. After watching Maria's interview over the weekend, my heart broke when I saw those two little girls. I think they were age six and 10. And they said their mom said they were, she was gonna go get some food and never came back and just left the girls. What happens? What does our country do in those situations? Where do the girls go? Well, those uh, children, unfortunately, will be processed by CBP. Um, and then they will be placed with uh, Health and Human Services. Health and Human Services will work to find a sponsor for these individuals um, in the country. A lot of times there's other family members that are here. Most times are here illegally, but there usually are other family members that are here that will take those children. And if not, they'll try to find a foster family for them. So meanwhile, last time in 60 Minutes, they did a feature and they talked about, uh, talked to your Border Patrol, uh, and Border Patrol agent Rudy Karish about what's going on at the border. Listen. My workforce right now is dedicated to the processing, to the care and feeding, to the hospital watch. So that takes that 40% away from their border security mission. They're it's making the formula. They're bringing juice. Well, there's a pile of diapers right there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's what we have to do. Is that the best utilization of your time, getting juice and diapers? Is that why you were hired? Not that it's not important, but that's, is that utilizing your skills? Well, the chief is right, and, and his, his people are being taxed um, to do tasks that they weren't trained to do and, and really not their responsibility for. We're having the same problem with ICE. We've had to surge resources in addition to the HSI resources. We've surged enforcement and removal operations resources to the border just to deal with these, these crush of bodies that are coming in and process sure. them to the detriment of public safety here in the country because those officers that would ordinarily be out there arresting criminals, arresting gang members, um, arresting public safety threats out there on the street, they're now at the border in El Paso and RGV processing families and releasing them. Sure. Matthew, uh, you just mentioned ICE. What's your message to the politicians in this country who have suggested over the last number of months, you know what, we don't need ICE, let's abolish ICE because uh, it, those jobs can be done by somebody else? They really can't. Um, only ICE agents have the specific expertise and training to enforce the immigration laws of this country, whether they're the administrative enforcement or criminal immigration laws. Um, and you cannot have any serious discussion about border security if you're talking about doing away with the interior enforcement component. As long as there is no strong interior enforcement component to in immigration enforcement, you will never right. have border security because you'll always have that pull factor. Individuals that want to come to this country illegally must know that if they do happen to get by the Border Patrol, there is an right. entity out there that is looking for them, that will locate them, arrest them, and if ordered removed by an immigration judge, effectuate that removal. Right, and it's, we have not made it easier, these politicians have, making you guys the bad guys. I understand today you're making an announcement on child smuggling and what your new approach to that as of today. What could you tell us? Right, so we've been surging resources from HSI for the past couple of weeks. And in just that short period of time, 
We've identified more than three dozen cases for prosecution. These are smuggling cases. These are false statement cases. Um, these are individuals that, when you talk about um, the safety and security of these children, you saw, these are individuals that are 23, 24 years old trying to pose as if they're 16 or 17 because they know they'll be released as a UAC. Unfortunately, those individuals go into an HHS shelter, so you have 23, 24-year-olds in a shelter with 10, 12-year-old kids. That is not a safe environment for those children. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're attacking it on all fronts. How are you able to tell their, prop, their real age if they're telling you one thing, but it's not, it's a, it's, you know, it's not truthful? Well, again, a lot of these individuals have documents. A lot of them are fraudulent, so we work with the foreign governments. We have our attache offices in the Northern Triangle help us um, work on these cases. Uh, we have very trained interviewers that are able to ferret out this information from them. Um, and so we will attack it from right. all fronts. And we're also not going just after those individuals. Right. There's organizations that are supplying these documents. There's organizations that are bringing these people to the border, guiding them across. We're going to attack these organizations both domestically and internationally. Good. Well, you know, Matthew, uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've heard about how, because your uh, facilities at our southern border are completely maxed out, they're, they're dropping people off by the thousands of bus depots and in different places. What can you tell the communities that are you know, suddenly flooded with uh, a number of people who are in this country illegally, but nonetheless the, go the government has uh, placed them in their towns, what they can expect in the future? Well, until Congress changes the laws and fixes these loopholes and prevents us from being able to detain these individuals and detain these families together, allow them to have their due process in an accelerated fashion and remove them at the end of that process if so ordered by a judge or release them if, if so ordered by a judge. Um, we're going to continue to have this problem. Um, Congress has yet to fund us at a level we need for detention. They've yet to fund us at a level we need for transportation. But what I would say to you is this is not limited to the border. So if people think this is just a border security issue, yeah. it's not because these individuals are not staying at the border. They may be there for a day or two while they're waiting for transit, but they're coming to every community in this country. Gotcha. Right. Matthew Albans, thanks so much. Hope you get the job. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks for having me.